Hello, this is Matt Doom Master with Alpha Game Reviews, and this is EverQuest Next, now in beta. Wanted to give a little bit of an update on this game, a little bit of an update review. Just looking at what it's like right now, how it's improved from the alpha. I got this game pretty much as soon as it came out in alpha, as soon as you could grab it uh, with like the $60 Founders Pack or whatever the hell it was. Got it. Looks. I was really sold on some early videos of it that came out. Uh, some Twitch streams that, that that were the day of, and I was like, "Damn, I got to get that." And it, it turned out that, um, you know, in alpha form, the game was still not really baked enough for me to actually get into. Uh, there's just a lot of bugs. And what do you want? It's a, it was definitely an alpha alpha form. There was some a, a lot of different issues uh, that have been ironed out since then. So I thought it was a good idea to take another look at what this game's looking like right now, uh, as of June 2014. What you can expect if you decide to go pick up one of the Founders packs. Uh, now, one thing that you may notice in the video is that this game is a little bit of a graphics hog. In fact, this is this is a, this is the high settings. Okay, so you you've seen what it looks like in the high settings. I'm going to bump it down to medium. Uh, just to try and keep the frame rates intact in the video. Uh, because, you know, I'm running a GTX 780 Ti, I've got a Core i5-3450 processor, you know, uh, pretty decent hardware, but still this game can really, um, can really hammer it pretty badly when you put it on the, the highest settings. So, you know, that's something to be, be mindful of if you're thinking about getting this game. It's probably not going to run very well on older systems, at least not right now. Maybe that it will improve over time. One thing that's definitely improved over time is just the general level. Um, I won't say design because it's all procedurally generated, but just the way the levels are built, the way the look they look. When the game first came out, uh, in particular, there wasn't really any oceans, uh, and you sort of had this boundary, which was just kind of like, well, you can't go any further. You know, that's just that's the end of the level, and you just stop walking. Now you actually have these very beautiful oceans. I, I gotta say, this is personally I find to be some of the best water effects I've seen in a game in a long time. I mean, you know, uh, Crisis Three is about you know is it like this good? But I, I have a hard time thinking offhand of any other game that has water effects that are this nice. <clears throat> and from a broad view, just generally looking at the game, it's quite beautiful. When you get closer in. Uh, some of the issues of it just being a voxel game um, and very open world start to become more apparent. You can see, for example, on these trees, the texture quality isn't very high. On the ground here, the texture quality is just okay. And that's not something that I would expect to change uh, too much as the game goes forward. Simply because the way this game is built, what it's meant to do, I, I think that super um, high-end graphics on a sort of micro detailed level are something you can't really expect to be implemented. So with the sort of technical details out of the way, let's talk about uh, what do you do in EverQuest next? Uh, and the answer to that quite simply is you craft. This is pretty much a crafting game through and through with Without anything else added, at least not right now, there is uh, plans to put in um, to put in monsters, to put in danger of various kinds. But oh my God, what is going on here? It's a very very effective wall of trees I've seen to run into. Um, anyway, to put in danger, to put in things to keep you on your toes. But as of this current moment, uh, that is not implemented. So pretty much you're just going around and crafting things. Uh, you craft by mining things from your environment or chopping down trees from your environment. Here you can see I've got the founder's pick. And this is um, agate, I think. And so this is pretty much what you do. You go around. I mean, it's, it's very much sort of voxel Minecraft in this regard. You go around. You find some resources. Uh, you, you hit the ground. What you get shows up in your little chat window here, and then you rinse and repeat. Uh, the idea being that um, 
you're going to take those resources and you're going to build stuff with them. So I don't have a, a claim uh, on this area right now. So um, and I, I haven't had time to build anything that's particularly, you know, impressive so far. But the idea is that you build um, whatever the hell you feel like building, really. Uh, creativity is kind of the point. The developers are building this not only as a sandbox game, but also as something where they can uh, get some inspiration from what other people have put together for the upcoming EverQuest next game. Um, <clears throat> so right here, uh, you can see some very strange thing going into the sky. Now this highlights, you know, some of the, the bugs that need to be worked out in the graphics because when you go up to this this thing. Uh, and you get up close to it, it doesn't really look anything like this. What this actually is, and I've went over there and checked it out before I started doing this video, is a vertical maze that someone built. It's basically a bunch of ramps going up into the sky with various platforms. Some of them are dead end, some of them aren't. It's basically a big platforming puzzle for you to mess around in. Uh, and it got to the top, and that was pretty cool. Uh, and that was about it. So here we're at someone's claim, but it looks like looks like they did not build anything yet. So we'll move on. And here you can see the actual map. This this is an area, uh, another area where the game has improved quite a bit, uh, because there used to be some pretty serious problems with the way the map looked. It wasn't always accurate, and it also had a tendency to show uh, the resources under the ground, and that would um, just make it look like, I don't know, someone had thrown a bunch of paint all over the map and it was kind of distracting. Uh, and, and actually, I'm going to stop here because this is, this is a new feature that's come into the beta as of late. Uh, caves. Uh, as, as far as I know, this actually was added just like a few days ago. Uh, and so now you can actually find these caves and I imagine eventually they'll have some sort of monsters in them or something. Right now they do not. But what they do have is lots of gems. So I can go over here and get some aquamarine. That's a pretty valuable gem. And I'm sure if I go into a little bit deeper into the cave, I'll find some other cool stuff. Got these crystals that are on the walls, but those actually, as far as I, oh my god, as far as I know, don't do anything. So, um, so of course, you know, a, a question I have now that I've gotten to this cave is, uh. <laughs> whether or not you can actually get out of it. And uh, I am thinking signs point to no, but we'll just go a little bit further in and see what's going on. <coughs> you know, this this is also sort of the point of the game to, to go into these areas and explore what's there. Uh, maybe there's something cool there. Maybe there's good resources. Maybe... Um, Maybe there's not good resources, but it looks like in this case we have come to a dead end, so that means we're going to die a terrible death of starvation alone near miles under the earth. Alright, so fortunately EverQuest Next has a handy evac to safety button that lets you get out of uh, any place like that where you're stuck. It's also handy because, as you might imagine, some players decided to simply build giant pits and troll people by trapping them in them, so an evac to safety button was definitely necessary. And uh, it was pretty cool, actually, at the bottom of that cave, um, there was a, another chamber I, I managed to locate which had a treasure chest in it, and as you can see down here in the uh, lower left-hand side, I, I got a bunch of resources, uh, including uh, almost a thousand iron ore, which is pretty nice when you're at, a, at the, the beginning stages of the game. <clears throat> now, where I am at the moment is someone else's claim which um, the person's put public permissions which means you can go in and use their um, resource crafting stations and so I'm going to just sort of show you what the crafting is like in this game and I mean to be honest it's it's not really that much different from most MMOs uh, you're going to go to you know a machine you're going to have your resources or not and if you do with the resources then you you know you click the craft button and then the slider fills and you get whatever it was. There is a chance to build better or you know not as great items. Uh, there's sort of a chance of failure, a chance of success uh, that factors into it. Uh, so you might end up getting an example of a copper pick. You might end up getting an, like a, a great copper pick, a, 
a blue copper pickup. I think there's a purple as well, uh, which has better stats. Maybe it mines more quickly. Maybe it mines more. Uh, maybe it does more damage. Although with no monsters in the uh, in the game yet, doesn't I don't think that really matters. Um, but that's pretty much how it works. It's like any other MMO um, in existence, really. And you actually have to craft your crafting stations. You pretty much start with nothing uh, except for some some tools for building and some basic um, tools for mining and uh, cutting down trees, and, and then you go from there. So, you know, if you don't like crafting in MMOs traditionally, if you've not been someone who's ever liked going to, you know, craft your own weapons, craft your own armor, or what have you, then you uh, very well may not like crafting in this game. You know, it, it definitely has a little bit of that uh, tedium factor in that you have to get a lot of resources in order to do whatever it is you'd like to do. It looks like here I found the guy's treasure stash, although I'm sure I probably can't, you know. Yeah, there's nothing in here, as I would expect. Um, but yeah, you can see this this guy has, you know, built his own, like, underground lair underneath his uh, his cool little townhouse. He's got, I don't know, some sort of like chessboard thing going on here. Uh, these are probably, I would imagine some of these are also templates uh, because what you can do is you can build, for example, like some sort of stairwell like this, right? And then you can set it as a template and then you can use it wherever. As long as you have the resources to build it, you can use it. So we'll get on out of here. Now the, um, as you can see, the array of things that you can build is pretty substantial. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of content already in the game as far as the crafting goes. Um, you start out, like I said, with nothing, and not only do you have to build all your crafting stations, but you look at all these different stations, you know, um, click on this, these tinker forges, these alchemy stations, and etc. There's different levels of these various things. This one is not responding when I click on it for some reason. Perhaps I do not have permissions for these, although I thought I did. Whatever the case, though, there's different levels of stations. There's many different stations to build, and it takes, you know, it takes time to put that all together. I imagine the person who made it built this, you know, probably took weeks, you know, to, to build this cool little cottage out here. Uh, and for some people, that's going to be, you know, that's the that's going to be the entire point. It's going to be to build these awesome things, you know, show them off to people, show them off online. And the fact that it takes some time to do it is is maybe beneficial. Uh, from that mindset, because it means that not just anyone can come in and start building the coolest, you know, tower or the coolest castle or whatever. You actually have to work for it. You establish yourself on these maps with your claims. You have neighbors. It's kind of a, you know, a little community that you build on each of the maps. <coughs> but the downside is some people are going to look at that and say, you know, I don't have time for this. If you are someone who has 30 minutes a day to play a game, then I'm not sure how much you're going to enjoy this, at least as it stands right now, because it's going to take you a really long time to actually build anything of substance. And in addition to that, there are upkeep costs for your claims. They're pretty marginal. Uh, they only cost uh, copper, as far as I've seen so far, um, which is pretty much everywhere. You can get a lot of it quickly, but still, it does take a little bit of time. And, and if you, like I said, if you're only logging in 30 minutes a day or something like that, it's going to take away from your playtime, and you might find that really annoying. Mm. Now, uh, sort of linking in with this this idea of tedium in the game, there is, of course, the the cash shop, and this also might turn off some people. Uh, you know, this is a beta, but there's already you know different things that you can buy. Uh, with wh what are these things called? Station points or something? I don't know. Station credits, SC. That's probably what it is. Station credits. So you can uh, you can buy, for example, a bunch of tin. So a tin builder's chest. Okay, you can, for 499 station credits, you can buy over 35,000 tin ore, uh, which is a lot of tin ore, uh, you know. But that's that that much tin ore would probably take I don't know 
maybe a few hours at least to mine would take a substantial amount of time. And you know, this this is going to, to sort of piss off some players. I mean, it, sometimes it pisses me off because I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm a founder. I know this is going to be a free-to-play game, but I already paid some money for it. And, and now, you know, to, to, to play this game in a way that's not tedious sometime, I need to pay, you know, money for every bit of resources I get. You know, that's not, you know, that's not great. That's not something that's going to um, be fun for everyone. And, you know, it also goes against sort of the idea of the game being based off your own, you know, ambitions and hard work. There's, you could very simply, you know, the guy that built that cool cabin, maybe he did spend three weeks on it, but I guess he also could have spent a bunch of money on it and gotten all the resources and then did what he wanted. Um, because as far as the actual skill progression and level progression in the game, there's not really any of that. It, you can make anything in the game as long as you have the resources pretty much from the moment you lay your feet on the ground. So this is another little workstation here. Someone, some people do this. Actually, this is pretty common in the maps. Someone will make a publicly accessible uh, workstation with all the different options, and you know you can go over and use it. And it's just, it is nice to see that. I feel like this game has a a friendly player community. There's not really a lot of competition. It's just all about making the coolest thing that you can. And so it seems like people help each other out. A lot they do things like make these uh, machines publicly accessible right by the starting point, so that's pretty cool. Um, now, of course, it's time to answer the question of should you spend your money on this game? Because right now, and for probably the foreseeable future, it's not free to play. It's something you have to pay to get access to. You have to pay to get access to the beta. And the answer is that if you like crafting, if you like the idea of building your own castles and houses and whatever out of resources that you've mined yourself and you put work into. If that's something that's that's, that's fun to you, then this is actually a, a pretty good buy. Uh, I say that because it's 19.99 right now and that gets you the closed beta access. And you know, $20. That's not a lot. And <clears throat> there's gameplay here. There's a lot of gameplay here. If you like this kind of thing, the the amount of content the game offers already is already uh, it's it's almost endless I would say I have a hard you'd have to play this game a hell of a lot just to sit down and say okay well I've done um, everything there is to do in this game you'd either have to play this game a hell of a lot or spend a hell of a lot of money on the cash shop so in that regard it is a pretty good value course the thing you have to realize is that you are paying for access now rather than later because this will be a free to play game and when it does go free to play it will not be as buggy there are bugs in this game it is a resource hog you will get stuck places you will still see claims sometimes um, I haven't seen anyone a claim that was developed disappear but I've seen claims that were not developed that you just put down disappear uh, which is annoying you know the the b constructing things is generally solid, but it can be a little little fussy sometimes with how the voxels work. And so, you know, it, it's very much a game in beta. You have to be willing to put up with those frustrations, frustrations that may, at time, uh, at times actually prevent you from playing the game or enjoying the game for you know for a while until the 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 bug in question is resolved. But, you know, as long as you know that you're getting into that and you really like crafting, I would say definitely pick up EverQuest next. Uh, not only because it's great for people who enjoy that sort of game, but also because there's not really anything like this. You know, this is this is Minecraft, um, really Minecraft 2.0 in the making. You know, this is the same idea, but because it's a voxel-based technology, it looks like this. And you can build things that are way more detailed, and you can build things that are, um, you have a lot more creative creative freedom. You don't just have to build things out of blocks. And that's, I think, going to ensnare a lot of players. I do hope that uh, when this game comes out in the full free-to-play release, uh, I believe it's due to go open beta later this year, that it will be a little bit more solid technically than this. But as long as they can smooth out the glitches and sort of um, get things going more smoothly, the EverQuest Next looks like it's going to be a really, really great game that's uh, 
should be popular with a lot of people who want to express their creative passions on their PC. That's all from Matt Doom Master and Alpha Game Reviews for now. As usual, if you liked what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button or leave a comment. Thanks for watching.